The Battle of Leros was the central event of the Dodecanese campaign of the Second World War, and is widely used as an alternate name for the whole campaign. After the armistice of Cassibile the Italian garrison on the Greek island Leros was strengthened by British forces on 15 September 1943. The battle began with German air attacks on 26 September, continued with the landings on 12 November, and ended with the capitulation of the Allied forces four days later. Chapter 1 – Background The island of Leros is part of the Dodecanese island group in the southeastern Aegean Sea, which had been under Italian occupation since the Italo-Turkish War. During Italian rule, Leros, with its excellent deep-water port of Loki, was transformed into a heavily fortified aeronautical and naval base, the Corregidor of the Mediterranean, as Mussolini boasted. The island was base for some Italian naval units, specifically, in September 1943. Four superscript A squadriglia caxia torpediniere with the sole destroyer Euro. Three flotiglia mass with two motor torpedo boats and six mass. 39 minesweeper flotilla with 11 boats. 9 minor units, 7 merchant ships, 2 minilayers and 3 Italian-built marinafairpram of German project. Dot after the fall of Greece in April 1941 and the allied loss of the island of Crete in May, Greece and its many islands were occupied by German and Italian forces. With the armistice with Italy on 8 September 1943 however, the Greek islands, which were seen as strategically vital by Churchill, became reachable for the first time since the loss of Crete. The United States was skeptical about the operation, which it saw as an unnecessary diversion from the main front in Italy. This was confirmed at the Quebec Conference, where it was decided to divert all available shipping from the eastern Mediterranean. Nonetheless, the British went ahead, albeit with a severely scaled-down force. In addition to that, air cover was minimal, with the US and British aircraft based in Cyprus and the Middle East, a situation which was to be exacerbated by the withdrawal of the American units in late October in order to support operations in Italy. Chapter 2 – Prelude Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Initial Allied and German Moves After the Italian government had signed an armistice, the Italian garrisons on most of the Dodecanese either wanted to change sides and fight alongside the Allies or just return to their homes. The Allies attempted to take advantage of the situation, but the Germans were ready. As the Italian surrender became apparent, German forces, based largely in mainland Greece, were rushed to many of the major islands to gain control. The most important such force, the Sturm Division Rothos swiftly neutralized the garrison of Rhodes, denying the island's three airfields to the Allies. By mid-September, however, the British 234th Infantry Brigade under Major General F. G. R. Britterus, coming from Malta, and SBS and LRDG detachments had secured the islands of Kos, Kalamnos, Samos, Leros, Simi, and Astipalia, supported by ships of the British and Greek navies and two RAF Spitfire squadrons on Kos. The Germans quickly mobilized in response. General Lieutenant Friedrich Wilhelm Müller, the commander of the 22nd Infantry Division at Crete, was ordered to take Kos and Leros on 23 September. The British forces on Kos, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel L. R. F. Kenyon, numbered about 1,500 men, 680 of whom were from the 1st BN Durham Light Infantry, 120 men from 11th Parachute Battalion, a number of men from the SBS and the rest being mainly RAF personnel, and CA. 3,500 Italians. On 3 October, the Germans effected amphibious and airborne landings, reaching the outskirts of the island's capital later that day. The British withdrew under cover of night, and surrendered the next day. The fall of Kos was a major blow to the Allies, since it deprived them of vital air cover. The Germans captured 1,388 British and 3,145 Italian prisoners. On 4 October, German troops executed the captured Italian commander of the island, Colonel Felice Leggio, and 101 of his officers, according to Hitler's of September order to execute captured Italian officers. 
Chapter 2 Section 2, Allied Forces The Italian garrison of Leros numbered about 7,600 men, under the command of Captain Luigi Mascherpa. The vast majority of these men, 6,065, plus an additional 697 militarized personnel, belonged to the Royal Italian Navy, as Leros was mainly a naval base. The rest of the Italian force consisted of an infantry battalion and two heavy machine gun companies from the Royal Italian Army, and twenty Royal Italian Air Force reservists. Only about 1,000 of them were first-line troops, most belonged to technical and service units, or to anti-aircraft detachments. The island's defences included 13 coastal batteries, 12 anti-aircraft and dual-purpose batteries, and several machine guns. Most of these, however, were poorly protected from air assault and, accordingly, would suffer badly from Luftwaffe attacks. As for the ships, the clauses of the armistice determined that all Italian naval vessels were to head for Malta or other Allied controlled bases, but Mascherpa persuaded the British command to allow his ships to remain in Leros, since they would be of more use there in the event of a German attack. The only aircraft available, were seven outmoded Kant Z. 501 floatplanes, which would soon be destroyed by the Luftwaffe or transferred to Leipzig. After the fall of Rhodes, some men from its garrison reached Leros, and Mascherpa assumed command of all Italian naval forces in the Aegean Sea. He also reorganized Leros anti aircraft defenses. On 12 September, a delegation of British officers met Mascherpa to assess the island's defences and to inquire about what relations could be established between Italian and British troops. Mascherpa did not go too far in his replies, since the terms of the armistice were still rather vague. On the following day, more British officers arrived, including Major George Jellicoe and Colonel Turbel, who was disappointed by the state of the defences, particularly the anti aircraft preparations. Meanwhile, the Italians made the decision to fire on any German aircraft that flew over Leros. On 13 September, the Germans made an offer of surrender with honorable conditions, which Mascherpa refused. On 17 September the small Italian garrison of Alimia, after leaving their island on board two fishing boats, reached Leros with their weapons. The influx of soldiers from Rhodes and Alamea brought the total Italian troop strength to 8,320, and on the same day the first 400 British reinforcements arrived. On 20 September Captain Mascherpa, upon hearing that British Major General Frank G. R. Britterus was coming to Leros, asked Supermarina for advancement to the rank of Rear Admiral, so that he would not be junior in rank to Britterus. This was granted. On the same day, Britterus reached Leros with 600 more men, food and equipment. Britterus published a proclamation in which he stated that he was in command, and all Italian commands were subordinated to him, this immediately created frictions with Mascherpa, who had been confirmed in command of all Italian forces on Leros, as well as the civilian population, but was now subordinated to Britterus. Both officers asked their commands for reinforcements, food and ammunitions, but little arrived. By October, the British forces on the island of Leros numbered ca. 3,000 men of the 2nd BN the Royal Irish Fusiliers, the 4th BN the Buffs, the 1st BN the King's Own Royal Regiment, and a company of the 2nd BN Queen's Own Royal West Kent Regiment, the whole force under Brigadier Robert Tilney, who assumed command on 5 November. Initially, the British had planned to secure the high ground of the island's interior, but Brig Tilney insisted on a forward defence on the coastline, which had the effect of spreading his forces too thinly. The Air Force units detailed for this operation were not large. Apart from the troop carrying and transport Dakotas, there were two day and two night bowfighter squadrons, a Wellington torpedo bomber squadron, three Baltimore and one Hudson General Reconnaissance, squadrons and a detachment of photographic reconnaissance, Spitfires. This force was based on the mainland of Africa and in Cyprus. In addition, two heavy bomber squadrons, 
No. 178 Squadron RAF and No. 462 Squadron RAF of No. 240 Wing RAF equipped with a mix of Liberators and Halifaxes, and a wing of 9 United States Bomber Command took part at a later stage. The only real defensive force were two Spitfire Squadron No. 7 SAF and No. 74 RAF. In all, the number of aircraft used amounted to 144 fighters and 116 heavy, medium and torpedo bombers. Of this total of 260 aircraft, 115 were to be lost. Chapter 2 Section 3 – German Forces The German forces assembling for Unternehmen and Leopard under the command of General Lieutenant Muller, comprised 3-Infanterie Regiment 440, 2-IR-16 and 2-IR-65 of the 22nd Infantry Division, the parachutists of I.-FJR-2, and an amphibious commando company of the Brandenburg Division. The invasion force assembled in harbours in Kos and Kalamnos, with reserves and heavy equipment waiting to be airlifted around Athens. Two groups with Ju-87 D-3 dive bombers were available for close air support. I group of Schlotschwader 3 flew from their base in Megara 2. Group from Argos and later Rothos. 2. Group of Kampfschwader 51 with Ju 88 were available for air strikes. On the night between 6 and 7 October, in the Astipalia Channel, the Royal Navy cruisers, Sirius and Penelope and the destroyers Faulkner and Fury attacked a German troop convoy consisting of the auxiliary submarine chaser UE 2111, the cargo ship Olympus and seven mariner Fairpram, sinking all but one MFP. These troops were meant as a reinforcement to the force tasked with Operation Leopard, and the destruction of the convoy caused the operation to be delayed. Chapter 3 – Battle Chapter 3 Section 1 – Bombing and Preparations Starting on 26 September, after days of dropping threatening leaflets, the Luftwaffe unleashed continuous attacks on Leros, enjoying complete air superiority. On that day, Ju-88 bombers sank the Greek destroyer Vasilisa Olga, the British destroyer Intrepid, and the Italian Mass 534 inside the harbour of Loki. The submarine base, the barracks of the naval base, the workshops, and four of the five fuel depots were destroyed, seven German bombers were shot down. Between 26 September and the 11th of November Leros was continuously subjected to heavy bombings. In addition to military objectives, also the villages and towns, especially Leros and Loki, suffered heavy damage. 10% of coastal batteries, 30% of anti-torpedo boat batteries and 20% of anti-aircraft guns were destroyed, hospitals had to be transferred in caves. The air base was bombed and rendered useless on 27 September. On 3 October, the Italian destroyer Euro was sunk in Parthony Bay, on 5 October the Minilea Legnano, the auxiliary landing ship Porto di Roma, the steamer Prode and one Italian MFP were sunk in Locky Harbour, followed on 7 October by the Italian steamer Ivoria. On 12 October the Italian steamer Toro was sunk inside a floating dry dock. The Italian motor torpedo boat MS-15 was sunk by an airstrike on Leros on the 22nd of October, while MS-26 had been lost to grounding on 9 October the anti-aircraft batteries were prime targets for the bombings, they often ran out of ammunition or became fatigued from continuous firing, but the dive bombing technique used by the Stukas allowed the AA crews to foresee where bombs would fall, and to shoot at the bombers during the maneuver which followed the dive, when they were particularly vulnerable. The Italian battery on Mount Patella was able to shoot down eight bombers by taking advantage of this weak point. Kalimnos had fallen to the Germans on 7 September, and three days later the batteries of Leros had started firing on that island. This continuous firing, along with the constant air strikes, wore the guns, and seriously depleted the ammunition reserves, the local command asked for more ammunitions, and the destroyer Artillere and Velite were sent from Taranto, but most of their cargo of ammunition was unloaded during their stop in Alexandria, so only a minimal part of them was eventually delivered to Leros. In the last part of October, Italian and British submarines made several supply runs to Leros, HMS Rorqual, HMS 7, 
the Italian submarines Zia, Atropo, Filippo Corridoni and Ciro Menotti, overall, the submarines brought to Lira 17 men, 225 tons of supplies, 12 40mm Bofors guns, and one jeep. Aircraft were also used for transport of supplies. Despite all efforts, ammunitions were still scarce, whereas food and medicines would last for many months. On the night between 24 and 25 October, HMS Eclipse, while carrying part of 4th Battalion, Royal East Kent's, Buffs, along with HMS Petard, struck a mine and sank with the loss of 253 men, about 300 survivors of the battalion reached Leros on 30 October. On 29 October, HMS Unsparing sank the German steamer Ingeborg S. off Asti Pallia. Between 1 and 6 November, while German forces were being concentrated for the attack, the German air offensive was temporarily halted. During the same period, ships and submarines brought to Leros another 1,280 men and 213 tons of supplies, including ammunition. On 3 November, German landing craft were concentrated in Laurio and between 6 and 10 November they were transferred to Kos and Kalimnos. On 5 November, Brigadier Robert Tilney arrived in Leros and assumed command, also Major General H. R. Hall arrived, and replaced Britterus, who left for Alexandria. Mascarpa was not forewarned of the substitution, he was asked to go to Cairo to discuss the situation on the island, but he refused, fearing that he would not be allowed to go back to Leros to lead the defence. Relations between Mascherpa and Tilney were tense from the beginning, upon arrival, Tilney stated that the Italian forces would not take part in any counter-attack, or have any initiative, relegating them to tasks of fixed coastal defence, and put each sector of the defence under a British colonel. The British commando even asked for Mascherpa to be substituted, and Supermarina decided to replace him with Captain Daretti but this was never carried out due to subsequent events. On the 7th of November, the Luftwaffe bombings started again, over the next five days, a total of 187 German bombers carried out 40 raids over the islands, especially targeting the batteries located on the eastern part of the island and those in the central and southern part, as well as the anti-aircraft and coastal defence command and the area of Loki and Mount Maraviglia, where British troops were concentrated. These last raids worsened the wear of the guns, disrupted communication routes and caused further consumption of ammunition. A British ammunition depot near Lockie was hit and blew up, causing more damage. Chapter 3 Section 2 – Landings On 12 November 1943 at 4.30 am, after almost 50 days of air strikes, an invasion fleet landed troops at Palmer Bay and Pasta di Sopra on the northeast coast. British motor torpedo boats and the Italian Mass 555 spotted the German ships between 3 o'clock and 3.30, but the reaction was delayed by communication problems and by uncertainty whether they were German or more British ships with reinforcements. German troops were thus able to land, and only at dawn did the situation become clear. The Italian batteries de Chi and San Giorgio opened fire and drove off a convoy of six Marin Affair Pram escorted by two torpedo boot Aslant, heading for Gurna Bay. There were other landings at Pandeli Bay, near Leros town, that were heavily contested by the Royal Irish Fusiliers. The Fusiliers stopped the capture of some key defensive positions but were unable to stop the landings. In the northeastern sector, a German force of six auxiliary gunboats, two armed trawlers, three MFPs, 25 landing craft, one steamer and five miscellaneous units, escorted by two captured Italian destroyers and two ex-Italian torpedo boats, as well as by minesweepers and motor torpedo boats. The Italian 888 battery in Bufuti sank two MFPs and damaged others, forcing them to stop the landing, the few German soldiers who had already landed were left without support and defeated, 85 of them being taken prisoner. In the central part of the island, the Germans, despite counter action, managed to create small bridgeheads, and in the afternoon, after heavy fighting, they captured the Italian Chano battery on Mount Cledo. The Italian Mass 555 and 559 were also captured in Grifo Bay, Mass 555 was fired upon, 
and destroyed by Italian batteries to prevent its use by the Germans, whereas Mars 559 was sabotaged by her crew on the following day. Heavy fighting developed around the Largo battery, defended by its gunners and by an Italian Navy platoon sent as a reinforcement in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. A British company was also sent to help, but had to withdraw after suffering heavy losses. Chapter 3 Section 3 German Consolidation The positions of the British units were spread around the island with poor communication between them. The attacking German forces had the twin advantages of local numerical superiority and air control. In the early afternoon Luftwaffe fighter bombers machine gunned and bombed the area between the Gurner and Alinda Bays, followed by Junkers 52s which at 1327 dropped some 600 parachutists from the Brandenburg division over Mount Rochi. Some German aircraft were shot down by the batteries and about half of the paratroopers were killed but the rest of them landed safely and attacked the nearby batteries, meeting stiff resistance and suffering heavy losses. One of them, number 211, was captured before dark, and its commander, Lieutenant Antonino Lo Presti, was executed. The position of these landings effectively divided the island in two, separating the buffs and a company of the King's Own on the south side of the island from the rest of the garrison. Counterattacks during the rest of that day failed. During the night of 12-13 of November more German reinforcements arrived. Counterattacks by the King's Own and the Fusiliers failed during the 13th with heavy casualties, but the buffs on the south side of the island managed to capture 130 prisoners and reclaim some control of their area. On the same day, the two sections of the No. 763 battery were captured by the paratroopers, another Italian officer, in charge of the Alinda area, was executed after capture. Italian 47 30 seconds of a millimeter guns were captured in the same area. The Charno battery, attacked by German forces supported by Luftwaffe planes, resisted until all the guns were put out of action, after capture, its officers were executed. In the morning of 13 November, following a new launch of parachutists, the Largo battery was also captured. Mascopa asked General Mario Soldierelli in Samus for reinforcements and air cover, but in vain. On the night of 14 November, British forces recaptured some batteries and positions and, supported by Italian artillery, prevented the false germ jagers from rejoining the German landing troops. New German attacks later in the day, however, led to the capture of Alinda Bay, Grifo Bay, Mount Clidi, Mount Vedetta, and Mount Apatisi. On the night between 14 and 15 November the German forces invaded the town of Leros and the villages of Alinda, and Santa Marina, while the destroyers Echo and HMS Belvoir landed 500 more men at Lockie, and Penn, Blencathra and Oldenham shelled German positions and sank some German, landing craft. On the same day, HMS Dulverton was sunk by the Luftwaffe while trying to bring supplies to the garrison of Leros, with the loss of 78 men. On the night of 14 November two more companies of the Royal West Kent Regiment and their commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Ben Tarleton, from Samus landed at Portolago Bay. British counterattacks on that day were sporadic and carried out by fragmented forces, thus resulting in effective and weakening the central sector of the island, However, with the help of two Royal Navy destroyers, it was possible to recapture the Charno battery, taking over 230 prisoners. The fighting on the 14th and 15th was mostly inconclusive with more casualties on both sides, although a counterattack by two companies of the King's Own succeeded in recapturing part of Apatiki. Lieutenant Col French was killed in this attack. German forces attacked the castle, the commander of the local British platoon ordered it to be abandoned but Italian Navy personnel instead kept defending it. On the night of the 15th the 4th Company from the West Kents was landed and 170 German prisoners were taken to Samus. The Germans, on the other hand, landed an estimated 1,000 troops and artillery during that night. The defenders were left with only one-tenth of their light weapons, and the German troops had reached the town of Leros and kept attacking the castle. Italian commanders asked Tilney to be allowed to have a more active part in the defense, but they were not listened to. By the evening of the 15th of November, 
the island was cut in two, and the situation hopeless. During the night Lieutenant Colonel John Richard Eisensmith, commander of the Long Range Desert Group, was killed in action while fighting inside the town of Leros. At dawn on 16 November, the No. 306 battery was destroyed by German airstrikes, the No. 127 battery on Mount Maraviglia, was attacked by German forces but stiffly defended by its garrison, commanded by Captain Werther Cacciatore, who lost an arm. At 12.30 the German command commanded Rear Admiral Maskerpa to surrender with his Italian forces, but he refused. Chapter 3 Section 4, Surrender On the morning of 16 November it became apparent to the British commander, Brigadier Tilney, that his situation was untenable, at 17.30, when German forces had nearly reached his headquarters, he decided to surrender. Maskerpa surrendered at 2200 hours, after reiterated requests by the Germans and even by Tilney. Some Italian units, not informed of the surrender due to problems in communications, kept fighting till 17 November. Overall, 3,200 British and 5,350 Italians were taken prisoner by the Germans. The 4th BN, the Buffs, in their isolated position, were unaware of the surrender so did not attempt to escape, consequently nearly the whole unit was captured. As with the Buffs, only 90 men from the West Kents managed to escape from the island. The few Italian ships that were still serviceable left for Turkey or British-controlled ports. Some Italian officers were executed after the surrender, among them Commander Vittorio Meneghini, the commanding officer of Euro. On 17 November, 30 officers and 40 wounded prisoners were sent to Piraeus on board the destroyer TA-15. On 21 November 2, 700 prisoners, including Rear Admiral Maskerpa, were sent to Piraeus on board the steamer Schaffino. On 7 December 3, 000 Italian prisoners were transferred to Piraeus on board the ship Leda. Rear Admiral Maskerpa would be later handed over by the Germans to the Italian Social Republic, he was subjected to a kangaroo court for having defended Leros against the Germans, sentenced to death, and executed by firing squad. Chapter 4, Aftermath The withdrawal of air support, particularly that of fighters, had sealed the fate of Leros. With no air support and heavily attacked by enemy aircraft, the three battalions had fought for five days until they were exhausted and could fight no more. The commander-in-chief of the British Ninth Army, General Sir Henry Maitland Wilson, reported to the Prime Minister, Leros has fallen, after a very gallant struggle against overwhelming air attack. It was a near thing between success and failure. Very little was needed to turn the scale in our favour and to bring off a triumph. Everything was done to evacuate the garrisons of the other Aegean islands and to rescue survivors from Leros, and eventually an officer and 57 other ranks of the 1st Battalion, King's Own Royal Regiment rejoined the details in Palestine. Alan Brook wrote that the COS meeting on 28 October discussed the desirability or otherwise of vacating Leros, a very nasty problem, Middle East have not been either wise or cunning and have now got themselves into the difficult situation, that they can neither hold nor evacuate Leros. Our only hope would be assistance from Turkey, the provision of airfields from which the required air cover could be provided. After the fall of Leros, which was received with shock by the British public, Samos and the other smaller islands were evacuated. The Germans bombed Samos with Stukas, prompting the 2,500-strong Italian garrison to surrender on the 22nd of November. Along with the occupation of the smaller islands of Patmos, Fornoi and Icaria on 18 November, the Germans thus completed their conquest of the Dodecanese, which they were to continue to hold until the end of the war. The Battle of Leros was considered by some to be the last great defeat of the British army in the Second World War and one of the last German victories. The German victory was predominantly due to their possession of complete air superiority, which caused great losses to the Allies, especially in ships, and enabled the Germans to supply and support their own forces effectively. Brigadier Tilney's scrapping of the original defensive plan, the work of Lieutenant Colonel Morris French, aided the Germans whose tactics, including scramble landings and an audacious air assault, 
further confused Hilney. The whole operation was criticized by many at the time as another useless Gallipoli-like disaster, and the blame was laid at Churchill's door. Casualties of the Battle of Leros were as follows. Germans, 520 killed or missing. Italians, 254 killed or missing. British, 600 killed or missing, of whom 187 died in the fighting on Leros. Hellenic Royal Navy, 68 killed or missing. Civilians, 20 killed. Chapter 4 Section 1, Legacy The Dodecanese Campaign and the Battle of Leros provide the general context of the fictional 1957 novel The Guns of Navarone and the successful film made from it, meaning that there was conflict between the Germans and the British, Italians and Americans in the Dodecanese Island group. Also, there were 11 plus 152 mm Italian guns on Leros that were captured by the Germans in the battle that were used to fire on the Allies until the end of the war.